Welcome to another Mr. James Accounting Tutorial. Today we will be looking at Unit 2, Paper 2, Module 3, 2015. Solution by Mr. James. We have here Part E. And we are given some data in a paragraph form here and then two columns, one with cash flow and one with the present value interest factor. Um, but before we get into the question itself, let's see what is required. So part one requires us to calculate the net book value of equipment. And then part B, compute the initial investment associated with the proposed replacement of equipment. Y183 and equipment X184. Compute the payback period and compute the net present value for the purpose of replacement of equipment. And uh, should uh, Bernice Industries purchase the equipment and why? So let's read through the question now. Bernice Industries Limited is considering the purchase of new equipment. Equipment X154 to replace the current equipment Y183. Equipment 154 costs $750,000 and requires $50,000 in installation costs. It will be depreciated using the straight line method over a period of five years. Equipment Y183 was purchased for $475,000 and an installation cost of 25,000 was incurred five years ago. It was being depreciated using the reducing balance method at a rate of 25% per annum. Equipment Y183 can be sold today for $455,000. As a result of the proposed replacement of equipment Y183, the firm's cash flow will be the following. Okay, so we have we have one to five, hundred seventy-five thousand, hundred sixty-six thousand, one to the three, one fifty-four, and one forty-two thousand, and we are given the interest factor. Or the discount rate, discounting factor here. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the answer. Part of the question requires us to calculate the book value of the equipment. For that, we first need to find out the cost. Right. And the cost of the equipment was 475, and we added to that the installation cost of 25,000. You get the total cost of 500,000. So this is what would be depreciated and you get the book value of this. And there's two ways of calculating the book value after the fact. You can take the 75% that is the book value of the course and you will get 375,000 in the first year or you can take 25% of the 500,000 and um, minus it from it from the five hundred thousand and you will still get back three hundred seventy five thousand. So um, what we will do next year is we take seventy five thousand again se sorry seventy five percent of the net book value from here and we'll get two eighty one two fifty. So we work in just with the net book value and we we'll get down to the end of the five year period and we have hundred eighteen thousand six fifty two as the net book value of the equipment. In part requires us to calculate the initial cost of the investment. So the cost of the equipment X one fifty four, this is the new equipment, is seven hundred and fifty thousand 
and it had an installation cost of 50,000. That too is also considered part of the cost. And you get a, a total cost of 800,000. Now, when you sell the old equipment, Y183, you will get 155,000. And uh, you, that would be knocked off against the cost here to give us the initial investment of $645,000. This third part required the calculation of the payback period. Um, I like to do it this way, but the, the years in one period, in one column, sorry, and the cash inflow or outflow in another column, and a balance here. Okay, so the initial cost of the if the investment was six hundred and forty-five thousand, uh, and that's in the at the initial, so it's year zero, what we call year zero, and the balance would be six hundred and forty-five thousand. Right, and the first year, the investment would bring back 175,000 and this is positive money coming in this was an outflow in bracket so we will knock 175 of the 645,000 and we get 470,000 as the balance to pay off the second part is second year we get $166,000 coming in from that and uh, it would knock off the 166 from the 470 and we get 304000 as the balance and we go right down to year 4 when we have 17000 remaining and um, in year 5 we have 142000 estimated to come in so um, this here would be paid off sometime during year five uh, looking at the figures by the second month it would be paid off so it's approximately four years one two three four years here we do not count the year zero that is when the investment is made okay and these are coming in at the end of each year right so we to get the fraction of the fifth year we will put the 17,000 over the 142,000 and multiply by 12 months here to get it in months okay there's an alternative way that you can also do the feedback period but this okay so this is the alternative way to do the feedback period we calculated that it was worth four years and 1.4 months just inside two months and we could also arrive at that by taking the initial cost of the investment and dividing it by the average annual returns. Now the average annual returns would be you add up the returns in all years and divide it by the number of years and we'll get 154,000. We'll take the PVAP period would be the 645,000 for the initial cost divided by the average returns here uh, we get the same figure 4.2 years okay the fourth part required that we calculate the net present value uh, this is a nice little table here that you can uh, use for your net present value the net present value is the initial cost minus all the present value of the future cash flows okay so um, we again we, we list the years out and then we put in the discount factor or the interest factor and 
one would be the year when you start out and then you have the following years the discount factors these are taken from the tables they have already been calculated for you at various rates of percentage and this is what accountants use to determine the present value of future earnings okay so we have the cash flow and the cash outflows we put them in here to get this figure here all we do is multiply this discount factors by the cash flow okay we will notice that it comes out to a smaller amount which means that money received in the future is worth less now oh sorry is is with money counting money now it the future money is, is, is worth less than now okay and uh, we will multiply each one across and then we will add all the positive figures and minus it from the negative figure uh, which that will give us the net present value okay when we multiply the discount factor by the cash inflow we will get the present value that is up here pp and when we minus that from the cost we will get the net present value and then making the decision part five takes a little bit of rocket science and um, if this that present value is positive then you will accept the investment and you go ahead with it if it is negative then you will reject it and not go ahead and you continue with your whole machinery now part b switches to another topic there are six reasons why you would recommend the use of a standard costing system okay now we should notice that these are uh, these modules each one of them covers 60 percent of your syllabus the specific objectives of the syllabus so um, that's why you will have different topics in the same module being examined okay so six reasons for the standard costing is it can be useful for product costing controlling of course and sick and decision making if you note how if i in this question it just asks us to list right so we we just list them out we do not go into explaining because there are six reasons for six marks um, they are not expecting you to write a paragraph okay just a line on each one it brings improved course control it generates useful information for planning and this is really in relation to the other system costing system okay you can get information out of standard costing that you will not get in the other accounting systems like your job costing and, uh, and the process costing and things like that it reasonably measures the value of inventory cost savings can be realized in the record keeping cost efficiency and hence reduce that should be reduced cost management by exception is easier uh, a word on management by exception it simply means you can uh, those those areas where you have unfavorable variances you can focus on those to find out why that is called manager by exception part c state four arguments against the use of budgeting as an accounting tool okay 
Again, uh, we'll hit four for four marks, so there are not going to be any long-winded arguments. You must make any point, and that's it. Time consuming to create budget. Game of system, gaming of system by experienced managers. Okay, I'll give you a short explanation on that. It, uh, it means that they, the experienced managers can play with the budgeting figures to suit their own interests. A portioning of blame when budgets are not met. A spend it or lose it attitude can develop. Budget only considers the financial aspects and outcomes. Budget targets can become rigid and flexible to market changes. Okay, so we have four there. Basically, what they are asking for is the disadvantages of using budget. And um, I have given you six. So, just in case in your next exam, they ask you for five or six. Okay, so that's the end of this. Uh, module 2015 uh, if you find it helpful uh, you can give it a thumbs up if you don't like it you can also see it so um, uh, and if you wish to see any other module put up on, on the channel you just see it so in the comments below and I will See what I can do.